So now let's discuss reservoir routing. So here we're still trying to estimate the outflow hydrograph and we know here that we will focus on a flood wave that passes a storage reservoir and this gets delayed and attenuated just like what we discussed in channel routing. So this occurs as it enters over a reservoir surface as we have this flood wave enter a reservoir surface. So we know the stored water can be released by using controlled and uncontrolled outlets such as weirs and we know the routing the flood wave involves the analysis and development of these elevation storage curve and the elevation discharge curve. So we're comparing the elevation and the storage and the elevation and the discharge. So we know for reservoir routing it depends on the continuity equation just like channel routing where the change in storage with respect to the time is the inflow minus the outflow or the inflow minus the discharge and this is the change in storage and we know it's going to be the storage is going to be a function of the outflow discharge so the storage is a function of the discharge q out right and that's the storage and you might recall how this differs is we do not have these wedge right we did we do not have this wedge shape or prisms that occur when we're looking at a reservoir routing so now we know that the discharge the outflow essentially here the q will depend on some formulas and these are in our reference handbook and these are the weir formulas so this is the discharge q q q and it just depends on what kind of weir we have at the discharge so this is a rectangular free discharge suppressed weir it's going to be a C value times L times H. So Q here is the weir discharge. C is the weir coefficient. It depends on the type of weir. And B is the weir length. H will be the hydraulic head above the weir crest. So that, again, is going to be the Q value when we have reservoir routing. And we know if we look down here, if we define closely what we mean by H, so this is the hydraulic crest above the weir crest and it's going to be this value. So this measurement here, this is our capital H. And based on that, let's do a quick example. So the inflow and outflow hydrograph for flood routing analysis over a spillway are shown below. So we have a spillway and we have the inflow on the left, right? And this is where we have the outflow. And what we're also given is the inflow and outflow hydrographs, right? So we will have some time delay and some attenuation. So based on that, let's find the attenuation of flow. What is this most nearly? So we know the attenuation is the difference in the peak flow, right? So we know that on top here, we have a peak flow and on bottom, we have a peak flow for each inflow and outflow hydrograph. So the difference there is just going to be this distance and this is what we call the attenuation. And that will be what? We know this value, let's estimate, this is 5.2, 5.4, 5.6, let's say 5.7. This will be 5.7 at the peak. And it's meter to the third per second, that flow at the peak. Now let's look at the outflow hydrograph. The peak here is what? This is 2, this is 3 let's say 3.1 3.1 is the peak here so all we do is take the difference so I'm just do 5.7 minus 3.1 you get 2.6 so which answer do we pick the closest one here should be a so that's gonna be the attenuation of flow so we have the attenuation of flow value for the based on the inflow and outflow hydrograph the time lag is what what is the time lag as we've discussed it's just the time difference between the peaks. So we will always have some time lag here and it's just gonna be this distance. So we know the time here, let's uh, j just say it's one. So I'll just estimate that to be one here. The time is what? The time here will be, this is 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, let's say 1.7. So you just do the difference between there, 1.7 minus one, you get 0 0.7. So the closest answer, obviously here, if you read it more accurately, you'll get around one hour. So you just pick the closest answer and it should be D. That should be the time lag 
between the peaks. So now let's finish off by doing just a few conceptual questions. We're told for a reservoir, the storage is determined by which method? Are we looking at direct measurement of inflow and outflow? Spillway gates positions? Attenuation between the inflow and outflow? Water surface elevation in the reservoir? So we know that it's, it might be, so we know the spillway gate positions is obviously eliminated. We did not discuss that. And as we've talked about above, the spillway mainly what we're looking at is the weirs and it depends on the discharge, right? But we know we have to consider many other parameters such as the continuity and the storage is a function of the outflow. So here we know that this will be out. Attenuation between inflow and outflow. No, that just tells us the attenuation value, the reduction in the peak flow rate. So that is eliminated. So now we're left with A and D. Is it the direct measurement of inflow and outflow and what, or D, the water surface elevation in the reservoir? So we know that it's, this is kind of tricky because the change in storage is indeed the inflow minus the outflow, the discharge, the change in storage with respect to time. But we know it's not a direct measurement, right? We cannot just directly measure this. What we do is essentially look at the change in height. So we have to look at the elevation discharge curve and the elevation storage curve. You see how both of these are going to be in our curves that we use when we have routing for for reservoir routing specifically we cannot directly measure the inflows and outflows what we do is essentially look at the elevation difference so here a would be incorrect so we're looking at the water surface elevation in the reservoir to look at the storage when we're determining the storage so now let's look the most important parameter used in the analysis of storage routing is what parameters multiple values is it inflow outflow storage inflow outflow inflow outflow and time inflow outflow storage and time so we know it's multiple things is it just inflow and outflow i don't think so because if we look above Continuity, it says the change in storage with respect to time is the inflow minus outflow. We have time, inflow, outflow, we have storage. One, two, three, four. So which one would you pick? I believe I would pick D because storage, time, inflow, outflow. So this is out, out, it should be D. And that's it for this one.